Hi folks, Harry Frank from Gray Machine here, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about background design. We'll be starting in Cinema 4D and working with some very primitive shapes, and using those primitive shapes to make some cool looking backgrounds. Then we'll move over to After Effects and do some finishing touches. So I'm going to use a cube. I'm just going to go up here and create a cube right there. And we're going to stretch it out, make it more of a rectangular shape. So I'm going to go to the object section or the object properties and uh, go to my X axis and set this to a nice even number like 1000. So I'm actually going to use two cubes. One is going to be embedded inside the other. It's going to be inside the other cube. So it's going to be cube within a cube. So I'm just going to copy and paste that cube and we'll set this other one to be the small cube or maybe I'll call this the inside cube. This one's going to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to set the size in Y and Z to be 150. Those both have to be the same because we want it square in shape along the side. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller along the X so we don't have those intersecting surfaces like you see right there. Let's just knock this down a little bit. Let's get a little bit of a bevel going on here. So let's uh, select both of those. Still in the object properties, go to fillet, not fillet, fillet. Uh, and I'll make this a very small radius, uh, like five or six centimeters. Now at this point, we want to actually be working with a correct aspect ratio. We're not actually doing that right now. We're using the default settings, which are 800 by 600. So I'm going to go into my film and video settings here and select uh, HD 720. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Film and video, HD TV 720 2997. Now down here, I want to find the length of the animation that we're working with. While we're creating our settings, let's just uh, keep going at it here. So I'm going to set this to 300 frames. So this will basically be a 10 second loop and we'll create our uh, animation to happen between that zero to 300 range. Actually, what we'll end up rendering is zero to 299 because that extra frame is the point at which it should loop. So 300 should be the equivalent of zero. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep hammering at that. So right now, um, this isn't going to look very interesting if I do a quick render on this. So just have some unshaded cubes and let's uh, do something a little bit more interesting. First of all, I'm going to group these. So just select them, hit option G to put them inside the same group. This would be my cubes. And let's create a camera too. So go into camera, look through that camera. And I'm going to set this so that uh, we're kind of looking at these at an angle. Now I'm going to go to my uh, group here, the null object under which I grouped them. And we'll do some simple, simple animation here. I'm going to set this to animate along its Y axis. So let's go in here, go to the first uh, frame, which is frame zero, set a keyframe for that, and go all the way to the end and set this to an even 360 degrees. So a keyframe for that. Now this is basically going to ease out, spin, 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 and then ease to a stop. So we need to fix this. So this is a linear animation. So let's go to our timeline. Again, that's under window timeline. We've got our cubes group and go to the rotation and, and hit H to make sure everything's framed nicely. I'm just going to select these two keyframes, key linear. Now I'm going to set this range here to cut that one extra frame off. Set this to zero to 299. And here's our exciting animation. Now this will look a lot better once we get some shading in here and we actually render this thing out. But notice that it's a nice seamless loop. Maybe I want to get a little bit closer to it. Don't be shy. Okay, so let's make this look cool. So let's go into your create new material, drop this on the group. We're going to shade both of these the same way. Okay, so let's double click on this material. Give it a name if you want. Now, I used to work in a lot of corporate video and I worked for uh, companies that all used blue. So every time I made a background, I kind of 
I always just instinctively made it blue because I worked for Ford a lot. Ford was blue. I worked for GM. GM was also blue. And then I worked uh, for at the time, which was Daimler Chrysler and Daimler Chrysler was also blue. So a lot of blue going on in my past. So we'll just create the, uh, well, we'll set the color to just a simple blue or whatever you want it to be. Now in the transparency, sec this to on and we'll add a little bit of refraction. So it actually starts to bend the light a little bit as it passes through. Under the specular section, we need to set the mode to metal. So it's actually absorbing or working with that color. And uh, maybe we'll set this to a blue as well. Now, you can see that we've got some interesting stuff going on here. Now, we don't have any lighting in here whatsoever. So let's just do some basic lights in here. I'll set a spotlight. Uh, and I find this always easier to set a target. Go to the target, set the target object to the cubes. And this way I can move my light around and it'll always point at my, my cube. Let's go to my top view, pull this over. There's one light and copy and paste that light and we'll set another light to be over here. Let's set some additional lights just to add some uh, nice little bright spots to this. In fact, putting one right in the center can work pretty well. Depends on what you want. I'll move this one out and up. Now, if this is feeling a little dark, we can actually brighten this up quite a bit by simply going to the specular and increasing the height of that specular. Let's go back to our render settings, define our output location. I'll just call this the cube spin. One, in case we make another one. Make sure we include that alpha channel and set whatever settings you like. If you like to do TIFFs or PNGs or EXRs, whatever you'd like, make sure we actually set this to render all the frames and render away. Okay, so here in After Effects, let's import that render that we did and drop this into a new composition. Cool. So I'm going to create a background. Now we can create a solid, like a, just a dark blue and put that behind it. Uh, I like to use a gradient. So I'll go to generate gradient ramp, set this to radial, take that brighter color, set this to something kind of light blue and swap those colors out. Now from here, you can kind of play with blending modes. So let's go to our uh, modes here. And a lot of different modes work. Anywhere from hard light through uh, screen. I think screen works pretty well for this. Now we didn't actually add any reflections to this. We just kept it simple and used the refractions and transparency settings to take care of most of the work. But there's a little neat trick you can do once we have this rendered is to, by creating a solid. So I'll just create a solid here in After Effects, a white solid. And I'll go to my effects, distort and select a displacement map and use for that displacement map, that cube spin. Now I'll go to the uh, max horizontal displacement and turn that up and hit T to show our transparency and bring that down. Now I'm going to draw a simple mask shape on this solid and experiment with different settings. In fact, I'm going to angle it just a little bit and pull this shape up. And let's bring this transparency down even more. So as this rotates, you can get some reflections hitting the surface. Now, one thing we need to do is actually get rid of that reflection outside of where the shape is. Now to do this, we would need to do an extra pass in Cinema 4D. In fact, I already have this set up. I would drop a compositing tag on there. And there's a number of ways to do this, but I would just do this. Drop a compositing tag on your cubes, go down here, select Matte Object, 
and set the color to white. And then you can render this out basically as a black and white mat of your object. In fact, I've already done that. So let me import that render. Here's the mat right here. We'll ignore the alpha channel. Drop this in above that white solid and set this to Luma mat. So now you can kind of move this around and get some interesting reflections or maybe even intersect these. I'm going to set another mask to intersect this, set it to subtract and feather the x-axis of the one that is subtracting. So that way we can get a nice fall off reflection. Let's move it to the other side. I don't think I'll keep it over here. So can move these masks around, get all kinds of uh, interesting reflection effects. So I'm just going to keep this over here on the side. I think overall this could use a little bit of curves adjustment. So I'm going to create a solid called CC from my color correction. Make this an adjustment layer. Go to color correction, curves, get a nice punchy S curve. And then from there it's just kind of finishing touches. So. One thing I often do is create sort of a lines overlay. So I'm going to create a black solid. We'll call this lines. Go to effect. Actually, it's way out of frame for you. Let's go over here. We're going to use Venetian blinds. So under transition, Venetian blinds, drop this on that solid. Set this to a slight angle. Turn up the transition completion and turn down the width. and take this transparency way down. Let's fit this to frame. Now that you've got the background created, you can use this in a number of ways. You could use it to put text on top of. So let's say we need a center title. Generally, I would separate this out with a solid, maybe a, even a, a black solid right behind it, drop the opacity down a little bit and there you go. You could also make this into a lower third. Just cut a little strip of it like that. And find the exact spot you'd like it to go. And drop this down. And put your text down there. Now, if you find yourself in need of backgrounds a lot, you might want to consider going to the Gray Machine store, graymachine.com slash store. And I've got a series of backgrounds here, 20 backgrounds uh, in After Effects with all the layers intact, as well as the Final Cut Pro version and pre-rendered QuickTime versions, uh, all for uh, 89 bucks. So these are 20 unique backgrounds, including foreground elements, uh, title bars, uh, all that kind of stuff. So check it out, support the development here at Gray Machine, and uh, sign up for the newsletter. Keep your eye out for sales as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. My name's Harry Frank for Gray Machine. Thank you so much for watching.